Hello everyone, it's Infinity Gamer here, and in this video, I am going to talk to you about how expensive it is to start playing Warhammer 40k versus playing Infinity, and see which is the most expensive to get into if you're looking to jump in at one of these new additions. So, let's get started. Firstly, you'll be forgiven for not having heard of Infinity. It is a much smaller game in comparison to Warhammer 40k, but there are a lot of similarities to be had. So, both are turn-based combat games, both are set in the future, both are played using two people usually, both use 28mm minis, both use dice to determine outcomes, both have a dedicated fan base, and both have new additions coming out soon, which makes this the perfect time to put them against each other and see which is the most expensive to get into if you're looking to jump in at one of these new additions. Now, as for me, I have played both games, and I've jumped in at the deep end with both as well, spending Oh, who knows how much on both armies. So I'm going to look at how expensive it can be to get up to a points level with both lists that will enable you to have freedom and flexibility to choose the models you want and the strategies you want. So even though both games have similarities, they also have huge differences. 40k, for example, is set in the 42nd millennia, roughly 39,000 years into the future. Infinity, however, is set a mere 180 years into the future. And while the grimdark future is full of pessimism, chaos and war on a galactic scale, Infinity sees hyperpower nations battle in on-planet skirmishes for tactical dominance. In a game of 40k, you'll be controlling units of troops, tanks, aircrafts across a smoke-strewn battlefield, while in Infinity, you'll be taking an elite force for a precision strike in a built-up area fighting rooftop to rooftop and alley to alley. The scale translates quite easily into the companies that own the two franchises. While Games Workshop, owners of Warhammer, have a multi-million dollar global operation with stores in almost every country, Infinity owners, Corvus Belli, are a dedicated bunch of gaming fans powering a boutique operation located in Spain. So, let's put both games on the table and begin to battle. Both games are actually pretty easy to get into. Both have quick start rules, which are free online. Both have beginner game size recommendations, and we'll be using these to determine costs quite a bit. So for example, Infinity recommends a 24 inch by 32 inch table size and 15 points for Code 1 learner missions. 40K recommends 30 inches by 44 inch battlefields for combat patrol missions. Here's an example of what those two different table sizes look like, just to give you a sense of scale. Both have two army starter boxes featuring different factions. Indomitus is the Games Workshop 9th edition box and Coldstrom is Corvus Belli's introduction into Code 1 and N4. So Code 1 is kind of a beginner version of N4, which is their version of 9th edition. So in Indomitus, it's got full rules for 9th edition. It doesn't have any gaming mat, it doesn't have any dice, doesn't have any terrain, doesn't really have any accessories. It comes with a lot of miniatures, and they're very good looking miniatures, and it comes with a heftier, heftier price tag of $200. So, one of the things I will mention is obviously if you're trying to buy this to get into miniature wargaming, you'll still have to go out and get a bunch of stuff to enable you to really play a game. Coldstrom, however, has a paper gaming mat, it has the dice, it has terrain, it has rules, but admittedly only basic and not full, unlike Indomitus. Blast templates, measuring sticks, state tokens, fewer models, but that's also the differences in the game, and a slightly lower price point. If you were looking to get into 9th edition Warhammer 40k, you'd probably be looking at Indomitus, and if you're looking to get into N4 Code 1 Infinity, you'd be looking at Coldstrom. So Indomitus and Coldstrom are designed to get you into the games in different ways. So for example, both include starter rules. They both include example missions to help teach you the game mechanics. So they are incredibly similar in terms of their purpose. So let's have a look at what you get for your money in terms of playability. In Indomitus, both armies are enough for you to get started with a 30 point game, which is the minimum game requirement. The same is said for Coldstrom. You have two opposing armies of a big enough point size in order for you to go through the mission that is in the rules. But are both models and gear enough to play a proper game with a friend? So both game starter rules basically say you can have a game with any amount of models, but to evenly compare, we're using the minimum recommended game size from both games. So for Infinity, that's a 24 inch by 32 inch table, 15 points, three SWC, and that's roughly half the points of a full size game. In 40K, you're looking at a 30 inch table by 44 inch table, but automatically you can see we're talking about quite different games. 40K encourages larger scale battles and more models, while Infinity is a skirmish game, so it already has the benefit of being geared towards a lower model count. But we'll keep the comparisons going regardless. 
So working out points for Coldstrom is actually easy because Infinity has a free army builder. Well, GW does have a free army builder through a third party. Thank you very much, Battle Scribe. But it also has its own app, which will include an army builder. Now, you do have to pay a subscription to get access to the army builder side of things and the points. And you can only access your codex or like your unit info for your army if you also buy a codex and then load it into the army builder. So that would cost you four pounds a month. Whereas for Infinity, we're looking at free. So if we start to add the costs together, we have Indomitus at $199 and we have Operation Coldstrom at $130. Let's add four pounds, which is with today's exchange rate, roughly $7 a month. And we'll just do that for, let's say you're going to play for six months, because obviously this is now the challenge is that we're now doing monthly costs versus a one-time purchase. So let's add that in there. So currently those are the totals. A codex on average will cost you around 40 US dollars, and that will enable you to see the models to make the points thresholds that you need. So let's add in the cost of a codex, because at some stage you're going to need that in order to know what your models are, how many points they have, and what the weapons options are, especially if you're going to step up to the full game. The Indomitus set includes power level information to get you through the example missions and the small level. So obviously factor into yourself, if you're never going to go up to the points level of the game, take that cost out yourself. So out of the box, the Coldstrom starter can get you over the 15 points threshold to play a normal small game. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a terrain set from GW, but you're looking at between $35 and $200. So we're going to go for the cheapest official Games Workshop option, which is the Riser STC Terrain Bundle at $38. It should do you for smaller games, but you also want line of sight blocking stuff. So even at this stage, you'll have to grab a household ornament or something to block views. There's plenty of other terrain options out there. With 3D printing, a realistic alternative too, but we're going to talk about legit terrain from the manufacturer even though you can easily cut costs by doing yourself, really. The terrain in Coldstrom is thick cardboard, while the GW stuff is plastic. So you're definitely paying for the better quality, but the stuff in Coldstrom is enough terrain for you to just put it down on the table and start playing. Now, that still isn't enough for us to play an actual game. So while Coldstrom comes with dice, measuring sticks and tokens ready to use, Indomitus does not, so you'll have to grab a tape measure, a dozen or so dice, and anything else to start a game. So let's start by adding the following costs here um, to take us up to something that's maybe a bit more realistic to actually start playing a game. We'll add the tape measure to Infinity's cost as well, because the measuring stick isn't long enough to check weapon ranges. That's everything you need to play your first game with a friend. Now, if you want to increase points thresholds and step up into bigger games, then for Infinity, you're pretty much going to be able to use a lot of what's in the box to get you close to the next tier. With 40k, it's a bit more of a close call. With certain weapon choices, maybe proxying one or two models, you can probably get to the next points threshold, but you're really going to be stretching yourself. Now, obviously, one thing I want to point out is that if you're looking to get into 9th edition with 40k, but you don't like Space Marines or Necrons, you're a little bit stuck at the moment without buying an additional book which kind of updates the points and tries to bring the rules in line with 9th edition, which isn't a huge problem. There are battle boxes and things out there to try and get you into other armies. So let's say you're looking to try and get into Imperial Guard or Eldar or something like that. There are bundle boxes there which make it quite cheap for you to get models, but nowhere near the same value as Indomitus, which is exceptionally good value if you're looking to get into 40k. Now, Infinity actually has only four factions to choose from to go into N4 and Code 1. So if you're looking to get into the game, each of those armies are either included in Coldstrom or there's then a separate battle box for O12 or Combined Army if they're more to your liking. Now, all of those four are compatible already with Code 1. If you go into one of the factions outside of those, though, you're going to struggle to find the rules. So at this stage, it's not necessarily recommended that you go into one of those armies if you're just looking to get into the game. Now, you can expand the Coldstrom models and the armies with Beyond Operation Coldstrom, which gives you a few extra models, and that takes you over the points threshold to then play full games of Infinity, which are 30 points and 6 SWC. Now, in order for you to take your Necron army and your Space Marine army all the way up to the full standard level, which, depending on who you ask, is either 1,500 points or 1,750 points or 2,000 points, you're going to have to be dropping a lot more cash. So factor that in into your long-term expenses. So we're now at the total cost for you to get into each game and get started. But is that it? What do the lifetime costs look like for each game? Is 40k cheaper in the long run, for example? 
To build armies and lists in 40k, you'll need a codex, one for each faction, or you'll need the app. And they are around $40 a pop. So if you stick to one army, you'll only have to buy that one codex. But as soon as you splinter out into two armies or more, you'll need to buy those codexes. GW also released new models a lot and have recently updated a lot of older models with newer sizes, like the Primaris Marines, for example. And even these newer Necrons are slightly bigger than the older ones. You get bonus points or victory points in some missions for having fully painted models. So you'll also need to buy paints and basing accessories. Luckily for you, GW sells all of those. Infinity things are a lot less strict. You'll almost certainly need to buy more models as your playstyle emerges with 40K and 9th edition, and also with N4 and Code 1. And also if you find a strategic hole in your list that needs filling because you want to counter something in your local meta. GW models aren't cheap, as this comparison shows. The rules and codexes get FAQ adjustments in 40k 9th edition and points updates, which are available as PDFs online or if you buy a print version codex and you upload it into the app that you're paying £4 a month for, then it should get automatic updates when points are changed and rules are changed. But if you don't have the app, then it can be quite frustrating to have your paper codex with some scribbles all over it as you try and update it or to download FAQs, keep them in your book and reference them as well as the main rules that are in there. Now, in terms of how Infinity compares to that, the online rules get updated because they're a digital PDF. So, for example, Corpus Belli noticed that there was a mistake in the rules and something became massively overpowered. And so, within a couple of days, it was changed and it was updated on the live document. The same can be said for if they adjust any points or anything with the models because it's all on an online app. Next time you log in, it's just going to be refreshed points. They don't actually do that very often uh, because everything actually comes out quite balanced. Another thing to bear in mind is, like you've just seen with 9th edition, 8th edition with Warhammer 40,000 lasted about three years. N3 for Infinity lasted a bit longer, but because the cost of transferring to a new edition is zero, because the rules are released for free and the army builders are released for free, you don't actually have a cost from taking your old models into the new edition. With Warhammer 40,000, however, you have to buy the new rules, you have to buy the new codexes, and that's how you would be able to play an existing army in a new edition. Now, they may only refresh it every three years or so, but in terms of lifetime costs, factor that into having a playable Warhammer 40k army. Now, there is a commonly circulated myth in Infinity that you only need 10 models to play. And while there's an element of truth to it, the fact remains that you should prepare to buy two or three times that before you're completely happy. And even then, you might switch to another faction. The good news is, there are fewer factions in Infinity than there are in Games Workshop's Warhammer 40k, so there is less temptation. So, where to from here? What you really need to do before you jump into either game is to have a demo. Either watch some battle reports to see what gameplay is like, or find a local gaming group and ask to watch. Most players of both Warhammer 40k and Infinity are keen to show off their game, as new players are always welcome, so don't be nervous about asking if you want to sit in and watch. You can join a subreddit and or a Facebook group to ask questions, find local players and see what people are generally talking about. Follow a few YouTubers to stay up to date with games. I'd recommend reading Goonhammer content if you want to learn more about getting into 40k, as a good amount of their content is geared towards beginners and is quite informative. Most importantly, set a realistic budget for either game. No one expects you to have all the models and most people will let you proxy a model to learn how it plays before you spend money on it. With Games Workshop, you can actually walk into one of their Warhammer stalls around the world and learn a lot about the game very quickly. With Infinity, that's actually a little bit harder. There, aren't, there isn't the store presence for Corvus Belly as Games Workshop has, and it might not be that every local gaming store plays Infinity because it's still a bit young and is a bit more niche. Wargaming can become a bottomless pit for paychecks, so obviously only spend what you can afford. So, which would I recommend? If you're on the fence, having watched this and done your own research about both, and you're equally interested, my personal recommendation, having played both for a while, would be to get into Infinity. For me, it's not just about the money. Yes, I've spent less on building two armies in Infinity than I had spent on rule books and codexes for 8th edition 40k. And yes, there's less temptation around Infinity due to the smaller army sizes and lower model count. Yes, I got f incredibly frustrated that GW would price a model based on how essential it was in the current meta, rather than the amount of plastic it used. But there's something else outside of the money and the bottomless pit of revolving expenses required to keep playing 40k. I like the Infinity game more. 
Whereas in 40k, you'd spend most of the game not actually doing anything other than watching your opponent, checking rules, and arguing about whether something was legit. In Infinity, you play with your opponent rather than against them. In Infinity, you're able to make strategic decisions and take actions even when it's not your turn, while in 40k, you're relegated to a glorified dice tower when it's your opponent's turn. The rules are more realistic in Infinity, less complex, and less open to interpretation. You rarely see rules as written used as an excuse in a game of Infinity. And the competitive scene doesn't impact the casual scene, nearly half as much as you'll see in 40k. Infinity is challenging, engaging, strategic, and enjoyable even when you're losing. Basically, if you're after a casual hobby that's fun to play with friends, doesn't suck up an entire paycheck, and scratches that miniature wargaming itch, then I'd have no hesitation saying that I believe Infinity is a much better game than 40k. Feel free to defend Warhammer if you feel so in the comments below. Feel free to tell me what you like about Infinity if you have played it. If you've made the transition from 40k over to Infinity, let me know why and how you're finding it. What do you think on the costs involved? Have I got these right or have I missed something? Now don't forget to like and subscribe to watch weekly Infinity related videos and follow me on Instagram for painting updates and behind the scenes shots. Catch you in my next video.